Okay, 6.7 graphing and solving quadratic inequalities. Um, students will be able to graph quadratic inequalities and solve quadratic inequalities for one variable. So all we're going to do here is we're just going to graph this quadratic, and it's really just uh, a normal parabola. We've done this a few times, so first of all, we, uh, we can look and see what the direction is. Well, the direction is that it's pointing down because we have a negative right there. We also know that the y-intercept is negative 7. And let's see, what else do we know? Well, we could find the vertex, right? We could, well, we could find the axis of symmetry. I mean, first by saying x equals negative b over 2a. So x equals positive 6 over 2 times negative 1. 6 times, uh, or 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. So we got an axis of symmetry at x equals negative 3. So that would be like right here. And then we can take this value and plug it in here to find out what our y coordinate is for our vertex. So let's do that and zoom in a little bit so I have some space. So we just pretend like it's a y equals because we're just trying to find out what the y is when x equals negative 3. Okay, so we get y equals negative 3 squared is positive 9, but there's another negative out front of it, so that's negative 9. Negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18. And then minus 7. So you got an 18, positive 18, and negative 9, negative 7. Negative 9 and negative 7 make negative 16. So this is like 18 minus 16, so this is like y equals 2. Okay, so that means our vertex is at negative 3, comma, 2. Okay, so let's plot that, negative 3, 2. Now, let's take a look at the original function. Um, it's a negative, so we know it's pointing down. But it's just a negative 1x squared. So this follows that normal pattern that we've been doing where we just go over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4, over 2, down 4. So this is actually pretty easy to, to graph. And remember we had a y-intercept at negative 7, so we can go down 7. I think that's 7. Let's count real quick. Three, four, five, six, seven, and look. Technically, that'd be over three down nine, two, and then seven is nine, and we have a reverse along the axis of symmetry, right here. Now, here's the only thing: when we go to graph this, remember what it's like about graphing inequalities. Look, this is not an equal to, so my graph is actually going to be dotted. And then, how do I decide what to shade? This is just like every other inequality I did. Here the y is greater, that means I'm going to shade up, because y goes up and down, so if the y is greater, go up. If y is less than, we would shade down, so here we're shading up. And so we just shade above that dotted line, and that's it. So all the same rules for graphing a parabola, the only thing that we're really going to add here is, is the line dotted or is it solid, and which way do we shade? Both are really easy to determine this thing, right? Really easy to do, we've, we've done that all before. So I'll let you guys do this one. Um, I would, uh, you could do it the same way I did this last one, by the way, where you just find x equals negative b over 2a, or you could complete the square and put it into vertex form, like we did in the last lesson. So either one's fine, whichever way you're more comfortable with, but go ahead and graph this parabola and uh, get as much information as you can out of it to graph it accurately. Okay, um, pause the video because I'm going to put the answer up in just a second. Okay, so for this one, I just did it a little bit differently, just to remind you there's more than one way to do it. I, I completed the square to get it in vertex form. So I factored out the negative, giving me x squared minus 4x. And then I added 4 because negative b, so negative 4 divided by 2, um, is negative 2. Then squared is positive 4. So that means the completed square would be a positive 4 here. So I added a positive 4 inside here, but really that's like adding a negative 4 because there's a negative outside. So I had to add a positive 4 out here. 4 plus 5 is 9. And that makes the perfect square of this, x minus 2. And remember, our vertex is always the opposite of this number in here, the same as in here. So that means our vertex was at 2, 9. Right there is our vertex, 2, 9. And this thing points downwards. The equal sign, the or equal to sign there, means that it's a solid line. 
and the Y is less than, so we're going to shade underneath, shade on the bottom. Um, that's all there is to it. Okay, again, the only thing that's really new here from the other parabolas we've been graphing is what does this symbol mean? And, um, yeah, just what does this symbol mean, really? Is it a solid line or dotted line? And are we shading up or down? All right, let's go on to the next question. Okay, the height of a punted football can be modeled by the function h of x equals negative 5x squared plus 20x, where h of x is given in meters, and the time x is in seconds. At what time in its flight is the ball within 5 meters of the ground? So if we were to graph this function here, we'd get some um, upside-down parabola that would show us the height of the ball over x seconds. So as the ball is traveling through time, it's also going up and then coming back down. And so we can actually graph this and get a visual for what it would look like based on time. So let's, let's see what we can do with this function. Okay, we could do quite a few things. Uh, we could find the vertex very easily. Uh, remember, the vertex is, uh, you find the axis of symmetry by doing x equals negative b over 2a. So in this situation, my b is 20, so negative 20 over 2 times my a, which is negative 5. So that's negative 20 over negative 10. Well, that's just x equals 2. So that means that my axis of symmetry is right at x equals 2. So let's call this 1, 2, 3, 4. And I know that this, let me try and straighten it out a little bit, is my axis of symmetry. OK. Now we could find out what my vertex is by plugging a 2 in for x. So let's just see what that would be. What is h of 2? I'm going to zoom in and figure this out. Plug it all in. So you plug in a 2 for x in both situations. Now let's just solve it. So what's the height after 2 seconds? That's what we're asking. So 2 squared is 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. And 20 times 2 is 40. So 40 minus 20, basically, or negative 20 plus 40, is just 20. So at h of 2, um, the height is 20. So that means, you know, this height up here is going to be 20. So let's call this 20, let's call this 15, let's call this 10, let's call this 5. And so there's my vertex right there. So we're going to have some peak, we start at 0 seconds, it's going to go up, it's going to hit this, and it's going to come back down. Well, how can I find out the two places where it hits the ground? Uh, I'm assuming that if it starts at 0 and hits at max at 2, we're going to come back down at 4, but how can I know that for sure? Because 2 should be right in the middle. Well, we can solve this thing. Okay, so I'm going to go over here, I'm going to solve it. 4 when the height is 0. Find the two times when the height is 0. So let's make h of x equal to 0. Set it equal to negative 5x squared plus 20x. Is there anything that I could factor out of both sides? Well, yeah, there is. I could take out a negative 5 from both sides. So let's do that. Divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5, divide by negative 5. Well, 0 divided by negative 5 is just 0. Negative 5x squared divided by negative 5 is just x squared. And 20x divided by negative 5 is negative 4x. OK. Now, is there anything else I can factor out of both terms? Well, I could factor out an x, so I could get 0 equals x times x minus 4. And now this is where we could use that zero product property, and we could say, hey, that means that x equals 0 and x minus 4 equals 0, and therefore x equals 4. And there we go, we were right. So the two points where our parabola is going to start is going to be at 0 seconds and then it's going to come back and hit the ground at 4 seconds. And we can even get a little bit more accurate with this thing. We know that the axis symmetry um, is right in the middle, so if I could find out what it is for 1 second, I would also get a point for 3 seconds. So let's do that as well. Let's plug in a 1 for x, see what height we get. And we'll probably be able to uh, figure out a, a nice height for both 1 and 3, because whatever 1 is, 3 should be the same. So let's do that as well. So let's plug in h of 1. That equals negative 5 times 1 squared plus 20 times 1. Sorry, I'm running out of room. Let me get a little bit more organized here. So h of 1 equals negative 5 
times 1 squared plus 20 times 1. Let me plug in 1 to that function. Well, 1 squared is just 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. And 20 times 1 is 20. So we just have a 20 and negative 5, that just makes 15. So h of 1 is 15. Okay, got a, we're getting a lot of information here. And this is good, this is helpful, because we're going to get a really detailed graph. So if at 1 it's 15, that means at 3 it has to be 15 as well. That's what the axis symmetry tells us, that everything is reflected. So let's get a sketch here. We've got about as many points as we're probably going to be able to plot for sure. So now we know, okay, we got a really good idea here. At zero seconds, the ball's on the ground, right, zero height. After one second, it's right here at 15 meters high. Two seconds, it reaches its peak at 20 meters. Three seconds, it comes back down to 15 meters. And then a four second, it hit the ground. So we have a really good idea of what's happening to this football. But what do they want us to know? Let's read the question one more time. At what time in its flight is the ball within five meters of the ground. So they want to know about this, this time here. At what time is the ball here to here? So we need to know when, what the height is right, or not sorry, what, what the time is right when it hits five meters, and what the time is right when it hits, comes back down to five meters. So think about that. We could actually just draw this line here. This is the line, uh, you know, y equals 5, or we could say h equals 5. And we could find the intersection of these two lines. Okay. I'm going to clean off this area for just a second. Okay, so let's think about this. We have this line in red that we're just going to call, you know, h equals 5. And we could even say h, another h of x or whatever. And then we also have this parabola that we said that h of x equals negative 5 x squared plus 20 x. Well, we could set these two things equal, and that'll tell us where they intersect. We could set this parabola equal to this line, and if we set them equal, we should be able to solve for the intersection point. So let's just do that. So we get 5 equals negative 5 x squared plus 20 x. Check it out. We have a, just a regular quadratic. Set it equal to 0. Set, subtract the 5 from both sides. So you get 0 equals negative 5x squared plus 20x plus 5. Factor out the uh, negative 5. You can just do that by dividing everything by negative 5 and you get 0 equals x squared minus 4x minus 1. Now, here's the thing. Correction here, sorry guys. We subtracted 5 from both sides, so this should be a negative. So when we do a negative 5 divided by negative 5, it's actually a plus 1. All right, so here's the deal. We could ask ourselves, hey, can we uh, factor this? So we could try and factor it if we want real quick. Let's see. We need something that multiplies up to 1 but adds up to negative 4. Can you think of anything that multiplies up to 1 and adds up to negative 4? I, I can't. And so that means this is not a factorable uh, equation. That means we're going to have to use the quadratic formula to solve for this guy. And that's going to tell us, again, that's going to tell us this point, what x is at that point, and what x is at that point, the solution to this guy. Give us that information, and then we can say, hey, it's between 0 and whatever time that is, and between whatever time that is and 4, that the ball is within 5 meters of the ground. So that's our last step. Let's solve this as a, using the quadratic formula x equals negative b, I'm just going to write the whole formula, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Plug in our values. Negative b would be negative 4 plus or minus square root. b squared, negative 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times my a is 1 times my c is also 1 all over 2 times my a is 1. Okay. Uh, negative times or negative and negative four makes positive four, so we get x equals four plus or minus square root. And this is just sixteen. Four times one times one is just four, so it's sixteen minus four or twelve. And this is two. Let's see if we can simplify this any more. Uh, we could factor this out. If you remember how to do the factor tree, I get a four times three is twelve. 
that's not a negative 3, that's just a positive 3. And you get a 2 and a 2. So there's my pair of 2's, there's my 3. So that means I can rewrite this as 4 plus or minus 2 rad 3 all over 2. And finally, let's uh, divide everything by 2. And I get x equals 2 plus or minus rad 3. Now, what does that mean? That's almost meaningless to us, right, as far as understanding it as a number. So what we actually have to do is we have to plug that into our calculator, figure out what that is as a number, and that will help us determine our answer. So 2 plus or minus rad 3. So we need what 2 plus rad 3 is and what 2 minus rad 3 is. So go ahead and plug that into your calculator. I'm going to do that as well, and then I'll tell you an answer. Okay, so hopefully you're plugging into your calculator right now, as I am. Okay, so here's what I got when I plug it in. I got about 3.73 and about 0 0.26. Actually, probably 0 0.27 would be a little bit more accurate. All right, so let's think about what that is. That's like 2.27. That's really close to like a quarter second and three and three-quarter seconds. So let's just say that. Let's say we'll have a little bit of space for our answer. That means that the ball is within five meters of the ground. The ball is within five meters of the ground. Between zero and one quarter second and between three and three quarter seconds and four seconds. Sorry, my handwriting's gotten a little atrocious right there at the end. But we can say, yeah, the ball is within five meters of the ground between zero and one fourth second and between three and three fourths and four seconds. And that's our answer. And we're able to answer that question. I know it's a real tedious and very involved question. Um, there's a lot to it. Um, it's why we do this after we've learned everything else about parabolas. So it takes a little tenacity to get through that. Um, I'm going to do this last question, and that will be the end of your notes. So if you want to take a pause or something, I understand. Um, but let's go ahead and go right into this last question now. Okay, it just says solve this algebraically. Here's the thing. If you were to solve this just like you know how to solve, you would end up with uh, some solutions that are incorrect. So you need to do these three steps. Solve related function, test three values, and identify the solution. Related function. What they mean by that is this is not really a function. This is an inequality. So let's make it into a function. Here's what we do. We just say, hey, what's x squared plus x equals 6? Let's solve this. This is the related function. Subtract 6 from both sides. Can we factor that now? Okay, let's see. What's something that multiplies up to negative 6 but adds up to 1? Well, 3 and 2, right? Three, how about 3 and negative 2? So we can write this as x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals 0. Then we can use the zero product property and say that x plus 3 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. Uh, subtract 3 from both sides and you get that x equals negative 3 as one solution, and add 2 to both sides, and you get that x equals positive 2. Okay, good. We've solved the related function, negative 3 neg and positive 2. Now it says test three values. Well, what three values? Here's the deal. This is an inequality. So this only gives us some parameters of where to look for our solution. When we create a number line, all right, let's start at like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, Two. We need to figure out if there, if uh, our solution is between these two numbers, outside of these two numbers, or maybe something funky where it's all to the right. So we need to figure that out. The way we do that is we pick three values, and those three values should be on either side of our solution. Test three values. So let's pick negative four, let's pick zero, and let's pick three. So make a little chart. Here's our values for x that we're going to test. Again, that's negative 4, 0, and 3. We're going to test it in this thing, x squared plus x. And we're going to determine whether or not that is greater than or equal to 6, because that was our original situation. 
So let's plug it in. Most of this we could do in our head. Negative 4 squared is 16 plus negative 4 is uh, like 16 minus 4, which is 12. Is that greater than 6? Yes, it is. Okay, 0 squared is 0, plus 0 is just 0. This one's easy. Is that greater than 6? No. 3 squared is 9, plus another 3 is 12. Is that greater than 6? Yes, it is. So we know where the solution is now. We could go ahead and graph it here if we wanted to. It's less than negative 3 and greater than positive 2. It's in both of those situations. And so we could write our solution. We could say something like x is less than negative 3 and actually sorry we should say or not and x is greater than 2. And that's our solution. If we wouldn't have done these steps we could have gotten um, a very different answer. We could have gotten something like x is between negative 3 and 2. We could have gotten that x is greater than negative 3 and x is greater than 2. We could have gotten a lot of things. So we need to go through all these steps to figure out if, it, if uh, what our real solution is. There you go. That's all of 6, 7. I know it's a lot. Um, my recommendation is you go through this question again because this is probably one of the harder things you're going to see, the harder things that might be on the test. See you guys on the next video.